afternoon. Doug should sit on a chair. Uh, we haven't changed the schedule recently, uh, coffee, so this should be, this should be the right time, I hope. Doll, you have achieved it. Amazing. I, I do. All right, well, I we might as well go ahead and get started here. I uh, guess I can do a quick update on the state of viewers first. Uh, we, since the last meeting, we've promoted the Atlasaurus viewer. That's the new default. Uh, just today, we got Delta FPS out as a new RC candidate, so that should be the next viewer that we're going to promote. Um, Oh, I should mention that Atlasaurus also includes support for the WebRTC voice, so once that is sufficiently widely adopted, we will be throwing the switch to actually switch voice over to, to using WebRTC. So or at least on our end, we've got the, got the support out in at least one release. Uh, let's see, after Delta FPS comes the next release, which we don't have a name for yet, but that's where most of the current work is going. Um, got a lot of folks working on uh, bug fixes and especially uh, working on performance improvements. Bert, I think I'll start with an E. We've got a, got a mate B and a mate C kind of waiting in the wings and we've got Delta FPS which originally would have been a dinosaur. I don't know, Elasmosaurus is, starts with an E. Maybe we'll go with that. Anyway, uh, that is viewer updates. Um, let's see, we've had some discussions recently with Firestorm around the three viewer policy. Uh, this was in the context of um, uh, some, uh, I think, a certain amount of consternation when folks uh, you know, weren't, uh, weren't able to continue using one of the older viewers there. Um, and apparently a lot of that traces back to a policy that we had had at one point. Um, that is not really current now. I mean, we don't we don't really take a stance on how many viewers, old viewers, people want to continue to support. Although we also don't guarantee that they'll keep working forever. Um, you know, we do sometimes make breaking changes. Um, you know, things like switching from Vivox to WebRTC that that will affect the viability of older viewers. Um, so, you know, we, we do try to communicate those kinds of breaking changes well in advance, and, and we'll continue to work with you folks about trying to uh, handle those. But it's it's more of a case-by-case -case basis. We don't have a sort of a uniform policy at this point about exactly how, uh, how people are supposed to respond to that. Uh, let's see, what else? Um, been a lot of concern around performance regressions. Uh, I think it was when we went from the original PBR release to featurettes that we got some significant hits to the frame rate. Uh, it was not really intended, and we're trying to uh, claw that back now. There's a lot of work going on on improvements there. Um, let's see, do you have anybody from the graphics team who wants to talk about the work there? Uh, sure. Yep, there you are. So, uh, we've got, we've been going over the statistics and trying to figure out 
what went wrong when. Um, and in our in our stats, uh, seven one seven was running fairly well, and seven one eight was running quite badly. And Atlasaurus gets us back up close to where we were with uh, seven one seven, um, but not quite to where we want to be. Uh, so we'll, we'll see where Delta FPS uh, lands. We'll get some statistics on that over the weekend. Uh, we do know that um, some low-end systems are having uh, problems with the PBR update. Uh, but, and so we're still looking into that. Um, like, for example, we noticed that on uh, NVIDIA GT 1030s, um, we had a large drop-off and activity from from users on those cards. So now we have some of those in house, and we'll be paying on the viewer to make sure they run well on those. Uh, most of the issues for low ends seem to be coming from uh, running out of memory, um, and there was a bug that went out with uh, featurettes, which was 718, um, that caused uh, uh, the viewer to think that you had system memory available and it would continue to allocate textures and run out of memory and then your performance would go to crap and then you'd crash. Uh, so that's been fixed in Delta FPS. It was not fixed in Atlas Source. So we're hoping to see the, the trend continue to improve with the release of Delta FPS. Yep, and that's out on RC today, so if anybody wants to grab it, they can. Yeah, that one... I'm actually pretty excited about it. It's, it's, I'm using it right now, and it's running better than Second Life has in quite a long time. Um, but we're continuing to dig in other places that we can get more frames out of, and we're also looking at some of the aesthetic uh, changes that were made with PBR that have proven to be more controversial than initially thought. Do we ever talk about the details for any of the things we're tackling now, or uh, wait till it's a little farther along? Uh, we could talk about it now. Um, one thing was the linear alpha blending. Um, I don't see Geens here. I think Geens is heads down trying to get that buttoned up, so it'll be available in time for the release after Delta FPS. But uh, we changed to linear color space for alpha blending and. Um, that has caused um, some content to look more opaque than it used to and other content look more transparent. Um, we're looking at addressing that by adding a uh, a value um, that you can modify per texture entry that will adjust how a transparent an item is um, on a curve. Um, and making that value modifiable even for no mod content. So people who have legacy content that they don't like the look of now will be able to go in and uh, change that. Um, so it'll make it either a gamma ramp on the alpha channel that'll make it more transparent or a gamma ramp that'll make it more opaque. Um, and if, uh, if that's well received, then we'll try to figure out how to maybe automatically apply it. But so far, uh, nobody's been able to come up with a way to automatically fix it. Because uh, some content wants it to go one way, and some content wants it to go the other way. And um, without human eyes looking at it, you can't really tell which way it should go. Um, and the other thing that we're looking at aesthetically is uh, the tone mapping. Um, Ryan, did you want to speak to the tone mapping? Um, that's, uh, oh, sorry, I, I wasn't prepared for that. Um, yeah, uh, so the tone mapping. Um, I mean, if you don't want to, I can I can talk about it. Yeah, yeah please. I'm, I'm bad at being put on the spot. Sorry, sorry. Uh, so 
Rai has contributed the uh, neutral tone mapper from Alchemy. Um, we're going to try making that the default. Um, see how that goes. Uh, an internal and some external tests. People seem to like that one better. It's not so dark. Um, and we're also looking at adding tone mapping controls to advanced preferences. Early on in the PBR beta, we had those controls, but it was confusing for artists to know like which tone mapper they should target. But I think everybody's gotten the message now that tone mapping is something done by the renderer and not something you do in Photoshop to your diffuse map. Um, so it should be all right to add options for alternate tone mappers now. Uh, that'll be one step. Another one is uh, the dynamic exposure. We're looking at adding controls for that to control how fast it transitions and what the range is and whether it's on at all. Um, and uh, um, then depending on how well that goes, we might move some of those settings into uh, sky settings. Um, but hopefully that'll give people all the tools they need to adjust it just to their liking. Um, and that'll give us the tools we need to identify defaults that don't turn long time Second Life users off from everything looking too different all at once. Does that make sense? Oh yeah, and as Cosmic says, the the alpha gamma thing that would only be applicable to blend font content. That wouldn't apply to PBR content. I think that's all that's in the pipe. Um, some fun like nuts and bolts stuff around um Oh, right, for the alpha gamma thing. Um that's going to be very relevant to third-party viewer developers because it'll it does use a new message um so keep an eye out for that um The reflections turn black when zooming in, I think, got fixed in Delta FPS or Atlas Source. I can't remember which. Oh, no, that one. That's different. Okay. I was thinking of something else. Yes. Need to fix that one. Thanks for the pain. I'm going to bookmark that one. All right. Uh, we can do general Q&A in a second. I just wanted to give uh, folks in the other camps a minute to comment if they wanted to. Uh, right or anything new on the server side? Uh, well, we should have the, the next uh, simulator coming out uh, next week. Uh, that's Picnic. I don't have my notes in front of me as to what's in it. But it's got some cool stuff. Uh, hot on that one's heels is uh, is WebRTC. We're just kind of waiting for the uh, the uh, trigger to get pulled. By trigger to get pulled, I mean uh, view enough viewers out there. Uh, I don't know if if you or Rex you want to comment on. Where we are with WebRTC is, are we basically done, uh, you know, developing and fixing bugs at this point, and it's just, uh, just kind of waiting for word. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll let Roxy respond, but my understanding is we're waiting for word. Uh, Roxy. Yeah, we're 
we're pretty much just waiting to uh, pull the trigger. Um, and I'd love to do it in about two weeks, but it uh, kind of depends on how many viewers are out there. Um, we did pull the trigger on deploying some of our server infrastructure for group and uh, peer to peer and ad hoc chat. Um, so you can try that on the web or PC regions, so although there's some little, oh, look, it's not quite compatible with uh, VBox at the same time because we didn't do bridging. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah, it's looking good. Yeah, that sounds great. Uh, so where are the TPVs with support for WebRTC at this point? Does anybody have it out yet or still uh, still chewing through it? Um, Alchemy should have something out relatively soon, hopefully in the next two weeks. Yep. Sounds nifty. When will WebRTC be deployed in every region? That is, that basically depends on on getting uh, support out in the in the viewers. Um, you know, when when uh, the bulk of the viewers that are out there have support for it, we'll uh, you know we'll be able to throw the switch. Um, but uh, yeah, certainly we're we're trying to get that out as soon as we can. So. Please uh, keep us in the loop on this stuff. Yeah, I can jump in and add to that a little bit. Uh, we're planning on uh, doing kind of a big deploy to pretty much all RC regions um, at once with the WebRTC stuff, and then a week later doing an SLS, you know, deploying to the rest, rest of the grids just to uh, reduce the awkwardness of having uh, WebRTC and VBox at the same time. Um, but there will be about a week of awkwardness with respect to peer-to-peer -peer group and ad hoc, ad hoc chat. Um, yes, regions can support either VBox or WebRTC, and so we're just kind of doing a quick change over you know, as fast as we can. Will PBR replace the old clothing system? Um, yeah, I don't know. It's it's hard to say that anything ever really gets fully replaced here. I mean, we have content going back uh, decades that uh, I hope mostly still works, but we do have changes over time where people, you know, or a lot of folks switch to using newer, newer techniques. Um, in the case of PBR, uh, getting PBR support for uh, uh, you know for clothing, um, so that you can do you know layering, um, 
it, like in Bakes on Mesh, is definitely something that we're we're interested in. Yeah, I mean, one of the reasons we're having the troubles we're having now with um, trying to get things to look true to themselves is because we're having a hard time with bringing legacy content forward to PBR, um, but we do take that problem very seriously, um, and that is what we are doing our best at, is to make sure that all the legacy content um, can exist and continue to be supported well, even though we have to move to a modern uh, rendering pipeline. Does that make sense? So uh, yeah, blend blend fawn like like the the existing material system and and the old um, even pre material system. None of that's going away. Uh, the only thing that went away um, was forward rendering. Um, so the ability to turn ALM off, and with that, invisiprims went away. But that's it. Yeah, we do try to avoid breaking things. Uh, it can be challenging at times, and we don't always succeed, but uh, we try to at least be uh, aware of when it's happening and do it as little as possible. Alternative to Invisiprims. Um, yeah, this is one of the things that comes up a lot. People like being able to do sort of cutouts. Um, comes up a lot with like exclusion volumes for water, being able to have like, you know, the inside of a boat or whatever. Um, I, I don't know how close we are to having a kind of a defined strategy for how we might do that, but uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, I think it's somewhere on the, somewhere on the longer term roadmap, but not happening right away. Right. Cause, cause Invisiprims were a, originally an exploit. Um, they were never actually designed to work the way they do, and we just sort of maintained uh, the functionality of that exploit until it was no longer feasible. Um, so a feature request of how you'd want it to work would be good. I'd I think there have been a couple, but I can't point to them off the top of my head. Um, water exclusion volumes is is definitely one because uh, that's that makes boat holes work. Um, the only other thing they got used for was putting holes in transparent objects, as far as I'm aware, and hiding avatar skins. Right, and with PBR, we have a much better shiny glass alternative. Yeah. I think the upcoming, maybe some of the upcoming PBR extensions will help with some of these applications as well. Uh, I know that, uh, let's see, I'm not sure Gein's right now, but I know Gein's has been working on uh, uh, on like a volume extension and various things like that. Kyle mentions keeping rain outside. I like the idea of a particle exclusion volume, just um, having a having one specifically for particles might be nice. Gonna make me bring back the stencil buffer to make that work. No.
A lot of the traditional applications in Visiprims were addressed with uh, alpha wearables back in the day. Um, people were using Invisiprims to, you know, hide their feet and that sort of thing. But of course that doesn't cover all the cases. You know, that brings up an interesting point. Um, having tools for authoring alpha masks. Yeah, we've been talking about that one. Um, one potential solution, I guess some backstory. Uh, so in order to pay for uh, the uh, reflection probe updates, uh, which make the image-based lighting work, um, we had to simplify the water shader and um, namely, we had to stop rendering the entire scene under the reflection map for the water. Um, that was just taking too much of too much of the frame time. Uh, and screen space reflections were an attempt to bring back high quality water reflections. Um, And between the time that we added SSR and now, we added support for actual planar mirrors um, in a way that it's not great for performance, but it's not as bad as the old water reflections were. Um, so we might try to create a high quality option that lets you uh, essentially turn the water surface into a giant mirror. Uh, so you get the high quality reflections back, but at the cost of frame rate. Um, but yeah, re relying solely on screen space reflections for that kind of thing. Um, To get the kind of quality that we'd need, we'd have to uh, make a lot more invasive changes. So the cost benefit gets kind of upside down. So there were a lot of problems with the initial mirrors implementation that went out with 718. Um, some of those have been fixed.
like one of the things was it would cluster updates every six frames instead of spreading them out. Yeah, also with uh, the latest release, we're defaulting, I believe we're defaulting mirrors off, no matter what your presets are. Yeah, and that, I think, yeah, so so the communications around it were definitely emphasizing, like, shiny metals, um, but, yeah, it's, it's hard to, it's hard to really convey that, yes, that the, it's called metallic roughness, like, physically based rendering with the metallic roughness model, but like the, the metallic part of that is really just a stand in for conductivity. Um, like there are a lot of inks that are not metal, but they are highly conductive. And so you put that metalness value higher than you'd think. Right, because creators would use PBR and external tools and bake the result out into a pre-lit diffuse map. Um, but no, uh, in a way, mirrors were the reason for PBR happening when it did. Uh, because, um, and, and I'll, I won't say we here, I'll say I, I really didn't want to give people mirrors before we had reflection probes. Um, I really didn't want to give people mirrors and then have them use mirrors to make cube maps that reflected the environment. Um. I wanted them to have the, the right way to reflect the environment without sticking real-time mirrors all over everything, because real-time mirrors are very slow. So I'll, I'll, I'll take the blame for that part. Um,
Well, and that's the funny thing. Um, when you look at the release history and the performance history uh, and the stats we have, like 717, the release before the featurettes, um, was running quite well. Um, and in 718, that's where the performance went down. But when we dig into the root cause of the performance going down, it doesn't actually have anything to do with PBR or uh, mirrors. It's just a couple of bugs that got missed concerning with like bounding box management and memory management. Um, so that's like the lion's share of the performance loss was was just bugs that happened to be in the first release that uh, Firestorm picked up that had PBR in it. So it's extraordinarily bad luck on one hand but on the other hand like we really should have noticed it like like going back through the metrics retroactively like we had all the data showing that performance went down between 717 and 718 and we shipped 718 anyway so we've adjusted our process to make sure that doesn't happen again but that's unfortunately what happened I'm not saying mirrors don't make your frame rate go down. Um, like and the presence of a mirror with it on and having a high update rate, yeah, it'll it'll make your frame rate go down. Um, so even after fixing some of those issues, we have decided how to default them off. But we're still looking at making them run better than they do. But most of the performance issues that people are seeing don't actually have anything to do with uh, PBR. Um, now on some systems like you know an NVIDIA GT 1030 for example yeah the performance drop turns out on that system it does have a lot to do with, with PBR um, and so now we're looking at like, like we've got stats on uh, which GPUs um, we saw a uh, loss in activity in and a loss in performance in and we're buying those and putting those on developers' desks and making sure Second Life runs great on those again. Yeah, and if you haven't used the Delta FPS viewer yet, please do check it out. Um, and please do file any bugs you find. Uh, it's uh, got a lot of changes in it around um, texture streaming and texture memory management uh, to free up a lot of CPU time and make a, and it also frees up uh, video memory in the background. That that's that's one of the other things that we got feedback on was more people than we thought leave Second Life running on and, and the background and uh, the uh, there were changes in the PBR viewer that would use more video memory and they wouldn't release that video memory if Second Life was in the background but now it will so if Second Life is in the background for more than 10 seconds uh, textures will lower the resolution and then they'll restore the resolution when you and the viewer takes focus again. But yeah, I, I, like like I was using that viewer on an Intel GPU laptop with eight gigs of total memory, like no video memory, just eight gigs system memory, and flying around the mainland and not getting frame stalls and not seeing textures load, meaning like the texture would be loaded by the time I got the camera up close up to it. Um, or 
really want to know if that's just me or if everybody is seeing that kind of improvement. Because it's got the works on my machine sticker. <laughs> yeah, I, I think we've improved texture loading a lot, at least in my experience. People don't usually report when things work, of course. <laughs> they just report when they don't. Yep. Uh, tell me more about the multi-threaded texture debug option. Does that enabling or disabling it? So that should be disabled by default. Okay. So look at that again. We did change. Oh, um, I think I know what that is. Uh, there was a bug where um, there was a spot in the viewer where where it would where it copies um, textures have been loaded into system memory into video memory, um, and that code was set up to use uh, a a maximum time slice so you wouldn't just get a giant frame stall if all of a sudden you got a frame that had like a thousand textures that had to go into into memory and on some systems i believe mac was one of these systems uh you would essentially never catch up um it would do like one or two texture updates a frame um and the collection that the textures were going into was not a queue it was a set so if textures ended up at the end of that set you would never get them like they'd never load um so that's been turned into a queue uh i'll have to play with multi-threading to see if multi-threading is a win generally again um Because OpenGL typically doesn't like being multi-threaded. You can end up with worse performance trying to use that background context. But and it's different on like Mac M1 versus Mac M2 versus Intel Mac um, versus all the vendors on Windows as well. Uh, but that's a good lead to check out. Thanks for that. Yeah, that's the other thing. One of, one of the big changes to the texture pipe, um, it was down resing everything preemptively, um, just trying to always make sure that you had the resolution you wanted in memory. But the way it was doing that was by loading down to 64 by 64 when it wanted to down res, and then loading the resolution that it actually wanted. So you'd always get that like unload, reload, unload, reload forever. Uh, now it um, doesn't discard until you're starting to run low on memory. Um, and when you do run low on memory, it uses the GPU to down res exactly to the resolution you want without unload reload, which keeps that traffic off that queue that I was talking about altogether.
I could talk about this for way too long, so sorry if I'm rambling. This problem ate my brain for like a month. It's the fix for the Mac texture queuing in Delta FPS. Yes. Okay. Uh, right. That 2K by 1K texture for profiles. Did we talk about that? The issue that's affecting some older viewers. Oh, we haven't haven't talked about it this meeting. Uh, so for folks who don't know, um, on Firestorm 66, I can't remember the last number, um, that, that a lot of residents are still using who don't want to update to PBR yet for understandable reasons. Um, if you use a 2K texture for your group profile picture, you will crash that viewer for anybody who sees your group, or, or do you have to click join? I don't remember the exact repro. But at any rate, you will you will crash all those folks. So don't do that. Um, and yeah, I'll need to follow up on the icon control and figure out why it's asking to load the full res version. It's obviously trying to not load the full res version, but something is amiss, and it is asking to load the full res version, I think. Yes, and we owe an apology to uh, one group in particular, uh, who uh, Kiwi, uh, the Kiwi Co group. Um, they got called out as an example, but when they got called out as an example, that resulted in a lot of people leaving the group who I don't think needed to. Um, and they have since fixed their profile pic. So if you left Kiwi for that reason, it's safe to join again. Coffee asks why it's even possible to have that higher res image for that kind of an application um i mean it does seem like it's unlikely to be a benefit for anybody well you just pick whatever texture you have in your inventory that you want to use yeah um yeah and... i mean if we yell at people to go to go fix their texture that's kind of obnoxious if we just automatically downsample it to something reasonable then that right. would be you know not not crazy behavior yeah, and looking at the code, that's what the code seems to be intending to do. Like, like it has a, a, a spot where it says, this is the size that I want. And then there's a spot later on where that size says, never mind, give me the full res. Um, so that that's, that's the solution, not like let people do whatever and just make sure the computer doesn't do something stupid when when people do something that you think is stupid because people are always going to do things that seem stupid in hindsight Yeah, I think it's understandable that somebody who, 
you know, doesn't spend a lot of time uh, editing images, is just going to use something they have on hand that gets the job done and not, not obsess over it. If it's a problem, then it's... Uh, it becomes kind of our, our issue to obsess over it a bit. Yeah, and, and with images in particular, like like meshes, there's still no tech for meshes that will just automatically say, yeah, give me the exactly the resolution of this mesh that I need, visually speaking. But you know, JPEG 2000 has been around since friggin' 2000 and solves that problem very well uh, for images. Of, so resolution really shouldn't matter. Computers should be smart enough to, code should be smart enough to just get the resolution it needs without wasting memory. Oh, that's a good question, Christy. Wait, are you the Christy that makes those awesome uh, uh, videos? Like, you fix Second Life in post? Oh, okay. Sorry. I'm thinking of somebody else. Sorry, I gave blood this morning, so I'm a little loopy. Oh, right. That that's that's why your name looked familiar. Oh, it's, sorry, it's Teal Aurelia. If you guys haven't seen it, I love it. Uh, oh, what's the Re Reflection Pro Bible? Uh, I've probably seen it, but lost the link. bookmarking that yeah a lot of nifty stuff in there
Yeah, that's fantastic. We are just about at time. Maybe time for one more question if we have one. Vegetation system is something that we are interested in. Uh, the first step of that would be what we've been talking about is sort of biome maps, but uh, of course it also depends on actual implementation of the vegetation itself. Um, so yeah, ho hopefully eventually, but probably not immediately. Yeah, uh, before, questions before... about rail with deb info errors due to loss of data from double the float, etc. Um, well, oh, let me specific uh, to rail with deb info. Do you mean errors like warnings as errors? Okay, yeah, um, that check has gotten more aggressive and we may have pulled something in that is making develop live up to its name uh oh i mean i haven't seen that i've been updating pretty regularly i'll double check, like going into develop is is passing in, in github actions as it goes in in the pull request so um is this, uh, is this on Windows or Mac or Linux? Okay, uh, and is it specific to raw with deb info? That that's another thing. I think most folks build release. Okay. Weird. Neat. Um, I don't even think we have a GitHub action that builds rel with deb info. Um. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. That's. That, I would have thought that release would have been more strict on this. Well, the, there's a very slight, actually, I don't even know what the difference is. Um, I know that raw with deb info used to have optimizations off like long, long, long time ago. 
Um, so, you know, breakpoints were more usable. Um, well, it's a little broken in some ways because it's some of those things are set at configure time and some of them are set at build time when you select a build configuration. Um, and them and, and they really shouldn't. So things that were intended to be configured for the build configuration are now being set at configure time based on what configuration you specify then uh, and then then get fixed inappropriately at build time. Um, so yeah, there's some cleanup I want to do for our build configurations. Yeah, because whenever I use RHEL with debinfo, um, I have to manually turn off compiler optimizations um, or for the breakpoints to be usable. I, I don't even know like what exactly is different between release and RHEL with debinfo uh, if you don't do that. I thought they were basically the same. Turns out relative dev info does not quite have the same optimization settings as release as I've recently discovered with my local What's build. I think it might be an O2 versus O3. Yeah, it's subtle. Okay. But it does optimize away a lot of the things that you'd like to look at when you're debugging. Yeah, the defines would make sense on the warnings showing up. Um, uh, release for download shouldn't be defined for release either. Those that should only be defined for uh, for, for the installer builds. Built by build.sh. It sets it explicitly. Yeah, that disables assert. Um, uh, no, I mean, it is mixed up. It's not just you. <laughs> this stuff has, has bit rotted a bit. Um, and some of it was to support. Um, like some of this had to be complicated to support um, the distinction in CMake between multi um, config generators and single config generators. So like you have to specify it at configure time for single config generators because it just builds a big tree of make files that have one configuration. Um, but the multi config generators like uh, Xcode and Visual Studio and the Ninja multi-config, um, they all let you specify that at time, which is much more sensible needs. But because we have CMake that supports both of those models, it's really kind of messy for this stuff. And, and unless you're very careful when modifying the way these things work, uh, it breaks things. So... I think that's how we got the situation. Where yeah, we're... sounds like something we should uh, should take a look at. Uh, we are we are a bit past time, so I should uh, should let folks go. Uh, have a good long weekend for those who have a long weekend and a regular weekend for everybody else. And we will talk to you later. Yep. Thanks, folks. Do, 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 do. I feel short. All these furries gonna dunk on me. Oh no. Like the new avatar thing. 
You are no longer a floating sphere. Away! Speaking of beta grid, I'm gonna go over there. <laughs>